Hello, this is Gus my Bus, and welcome to another episode of Power Trip. We haven't been on for a little while, but I've had some requests and some interest in learning how to do plastic welding. So I have a piece right here from a damaged vehicle, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and this is very common. Now, I don't have the other section to this, but we're going to cut it in here, and then we're going to weld it back together and do a repair, and let's see how well it works. So let's get started. Okay, this piece is from uh, the front end of a car uh, underneath the regular bumper molding. And I found this on the side of the road, just to use this as an example. I didn't have a piece around my place to do so. But usually when these things get hit, they crack, and you can see this cracked edge right here. This nice straight edge has actually been cut with a pair of aviation snips. And uh, the reason why I did that is because I'm going to use this edge and cut me a little piece and that's going to be my welding rod material. So I just take that snip and you can see it cuts pretty good right through it. So I'm going to clean this up, this little piece up right here and uh, get the paint off so I have kind of a piece of plastic to use to do uh, my plastic weld. So I'll go take care of that. And I'll okay, be first we're going to take this little piece and we're going to sand it a little bit. Let me get some of this paint off of it. Okay, now we have a good clean uh, piece of material that we can use if we need to as a filler, like a little, you know, plastic welding rod, so to speak. Okay, next what I'm going to do is to make it simple, we're going to take and we're going to cut this. Alright, we're going to leave it about like that, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to drill a hole here. And uh, this is just to show you that you can fill, maybe stop drill the crack if it goes in, but you're also, we're going to fill the hole with new plastic material as well. And then we're going to work our way back and fill the crack. And then we're going to sand it off and prime it and see if we can get it to look uh, like it used to before we cut it. Okay, I went and got a drill. This bit is quite a bit overkill for this. But I did this on purpose because I want to actually fill the hole and show you that it can be done that way as well. So we'll go ahead and drill that right there. And we can actually use these little filings of, uh, from the drill hole as part of our filler too. So I'm going to put that over here with our little uh, filler stick. Then we're going to go and clean this up. Now this can be done a couple of ways. We can, you know, use sandpaper and do it. We can get it right down through the paint, or we can use, uh, if we want to, maybe something like a wire wheel or something so we can grind down. I might try that here for a second and see how that works. I almost don't know if I like this. It seems like it's almost taken off too much material. So I'm going to probably go back to just a piece of sandpaper. See if we can get most of it off the back. When you do this, you actually need to make sure you get both sides, not just the top side. So 
surface is good and clean. I'm actually going to go over it with a special uh, prep, uh, painting prep I use for powder coating. I get it from Eastwood. I'm going to spread this open and try to get inside the groove as well. Got a little bit of color on the inside. Gonna take care of that. Okay. Now we're about ready to uh, work on the uh, plastic weld here. Okay. I'll get this a little bit closer so you can see a little bit better. Okay, that's a little bit better view. What I'm actually going to be using here is a Weller soldering iron. Now this is one that I use uh, for electronic work, but it works really well for doing plastic welding as well. I use the temperature on it uh, turned up to 75. It's a Weller WES51 unit. It's one of the nicer units. I've had it for a number of years and it works really good for this. So I'll uh, get a better picture of the unit in a little bit. One nice thing is it heats up very, very fast and uh, it has great uh, consistency with its temperature control. Now if this piece had a crack all the way through, one of the things that we would do is we would put a clamp kind of like this on it and I'm going to do this just to hold it steady right on the edge. And we would clamp it and then we would put like a tack a tack weld on it, just like you do any other weld. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just to show that we're going to do that. And to get this a little bit heated up here, you can see it's already starting to melt. And we'll put just a little bit of a tack weld of plastic on this end, just like that. All right. Now we're going to go and fill this hole. Now I use the same material that came from the fender because I know that I'm not going to have a consistency problem with the type of plastic that I'm using. That way I have uh, bonding better and things like that. There's usually, if you have something that needs a minor repair like this, there's almost always a spot where you can maybe cut off a little tiny piece of plastic from the other side that's not noticeable and then you can repair a tab or you can fill a hole or a crack or whatever you need to do with the material you already have. It makes it very, very simple. Okay, I'm going to work on the back side of this too. But remember, I mentioned to you that you can also use shavings. So I can take these shavings I drilled, they melt down very, very easily. And we can take those and melt those right into here so we can get some consistency and some more fill if we needed to. The problem with shavings, you can see there's a little bit of red in there. So I am mixing a little bit of the paint in with it. Hasn't usually presented a problem if it's just a little bit, but just so you're aware of it, you need to make sure you, you know, you're taking that into consideration for the strength of the bond. So I'll take the edge of it and I'll kind of feather it over a little bit to kind of smooth it. So it takes less finish work when I'm done. Now you can get these tools that are designed for plastic welding that have a flat foot that are doing almost exactly what I'm doing with the edge of the solder iron.
Now sometimes you don't need the fill, but I'm using the fill for two reasons. One, I want to make sure there's good penetration, but I would rather sand down a little bit of, of uh, extra plastic instead of using like uh, Bondo or another type of putty to fill this imperfection in the crack, which I still may have to use anyway, but I would rather use this material here and fill it with that than uh, go the route of having to fill it with other uh, filler material later. And we come over here and actually smooth over this a little bit after we're done to kind of thin it down and, and uh, make our life a little bit easier when we're done. And by no means is this the perfect technique, it's just that what works for me. And uh, there's other people that may have even better techniques than this, but I found this is much simpler than I thought it would be. And it makes a good repair. I've even fixed uh, drum sets for Rock Band and, and Guitar Hero and things like that when they break and done this and my kids have used them. So it tends up uh, being much better than I thought it would be, it's much stronger than uh, gluing them or epoxying them in general. And sometimes you can back it up with some JB Weld or something if you really want to over the top and finish it with that because it drives a little bit harder. There you go, there's the back side. You can actually see that, yeah, the plastic filled the hole right here uh, from the top when I did the drill hole fill. And we'll smooth that down here a little bit. The back side, of course, doesn't need to be near as pretty, but you know that when you're doing the back side that it's gonna bond all the way through and it's gonna ensure that you're not gonna have a problem with this opening back up later. So I always do both sides just to be certain that things are going to work the way I want it to work. And surprisingly enough, this does not really stick to this uh, soldering iron element like I thought it would when I initially tried this. It wipes right off and keeps it pretty clean and I can go right back to soldering or whatever I'm going to do with electronics. It works extremely well. So there's no fear of doing that or you don't have to have necessarily a dedicated iron that just does your plastic work if you don't want to. All right, let's get this cleaned up. This is just a quick shot of the soldering iron unit that I'm using. I have it way up here on the 75 mark on it. Okay, I brought, I brought this in here just to get a shot of this. I used a disc sander to burn this uh, down, sand it down, and you can see just a couple little marks. I got to fill very, very lightly right in here, but you can't even tell that the, that the crack was there from the other side by doing the plastic welding. Looks just like the original piece almost, so it looks very, very good. I'll do a little more finish work. I'll bring it back and then we'll paint it and uh, see how it looks. Well, as you can see with a little bit of white primer, it, uh, with a little bit of white primer, it looks pretty good. Ready to use again if we uh, have the rest of it for the car. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching Power Driven, and please remember to subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks.